All right, so we are going to discuss React.js. Uh, React.js is a relatively new framework, I guess, three, four years by now, uh, from Facebook for creating front-end applications, such as uh, web applications with nice UI, as well as uh, React has another component called React Native, which makes it possible to create uh, mobile applications or using the same code. So your web application can also be turned into a mobile application. Um, it competes with uh, AngularJS, KnockoutJS, EmberJS, Vue.js, and so many others. Uh, what it does not compete with is probably jQuery because jQuery is a uh, more uh, lower level framework. It's uh, it, jQuery's job is to find you find you DOM elements using selectors and then manipulate them, as well as attach uh, event handlers to various uh, DOM events, which is different from what we do here in all these front-end frameworks such as Angular and React. They operate at a higher level of abstraction. All right, so let's uh, start looking at some React code. This is an example of a re of React code. Uh, first thing you should notice is that you are using classes in JavaScript because this is not plain JavaScript. This is ES6 as in ECMAScript version 6. So that basically means uh, you should you can also call it ES2015, ECMAScript 2015. Um, that's another name for it. So it has two things. One is that it uses uh, ES6. Second, it uses JSX, so this is JSX, where you inject HTML um, tags directly into JavaScript. So that's, that's part of the syntax is JSX, but where, as you're using classes and methods, that is ES6. And you're using both to write React. And it, you have to remember that both ES6 and JSX finally needs to be run by the browser. And browsers do not know how to run JSX and ES6. Most of them do not. They only know how to run straight JavaScript. So therefore, the ES6 and JSX has to get comp compiled into straight JavaScript. And that is done by a compiler, uh, by ES6 compiler. One of the ES6 compilers is called Babel or Babel. I don't know how, how to pronounce that. Uh, so let's look at... Uh, that also in a minute. Basically, you create components. ES6, sorry, React.js uh, requires you to create components like this, and a component is usually a class like this. Class hello message extends react.component, so that makes hello message a component. And the most important method in there will be render, because these are all UI components, they need to render themselves. So when they render, they are supposed to return DOM elements or um, React components. So, and here is a DOM element which is a div with hello, and then this dot props dot name. What that means is this being the component, props being the attributes that were used when you, you instantiated the component in here, right? Props and dot name is the specific attribute that uh, among the set of attributes. So, so this is an example of where we are using the component. Now, by the way, mount node, mount node is basically the DOM element whose child uh, who, uh, you are going to populate with this. So you basically take mount node, which is uh, usually a DOM node, and then you make the this this uh, element a child of that mount node, uh, and then this element is hello message, which is same as the name of this component. It has an attribute called name and value Jane. So that means when hello message gets instantiated, it will get instantiated with props.name equal to Jane. And then of course, you might notice the fact that it uses single curly braces in the middle of JSX. And that basically is expression syntax. You put any kind of JavaScript expression inside that and that JavaScript expression will be evaluated in the middle of the JSX, okay? All right, so let's actually try this out. Now, to try this out, 
what you ha uh, what you will be doing is you'll be writing a um, let's write a very simple um, dev web react. So let me say let me make a directory for my project. I'll call it uh, you know learn react. React and I create an index.html. First thing I always like to do is put something something basic in there. Oh, you know what? Let me let me not do this. Let me uh, do this in um, in uh, Visual Studio Code VS Code. Yeah, this one and open. opening oops sorry it's not opening that I need to open a folder open folder dev web react okay so that opens the folder and we will simply create a new file oops new file index So here we say not that okay. okay HTML and head and then correspondingly there will be a body and we'll put title in there. So in here we'll put a simple component. Well, no, you don't put components directly in body. You put, you put a placeholder, the mount node that is. So let's see, let's put an H1 thing that we are learning React, and React.js. And then, so this is a standard HTML. And then we put a div. And it will have ID of app, or ID root, sometimes they call it root. And then that's the end of the div. And in there, before you actually your React.js application uh, act works, it will be uh, this div will be shown as is. So we can say uh, React JS app loading something like that. Of course, this should show up only very very briefly. And then in our script, which is the the code that we will write. we can put the rest of the code. So the code is going to be class hello message extends react react js sorry react.component is it? Let me make sure that I'm getting yeah react.component and uh, it has a render method. So the render method is simply going to be another div with hello and uh, this dot props as in properties dot name. We are saying hello to the person slash div. So that's what we are returning. And uh, to mount this component, we simply say uh, react. What is it? React DOM dot render, and then we say what component we want to render, and the component is going to be hello message name equal to you know Alice. And that's the end of that hello message. Now you give the uh, the component uh, sorry the DOM element where you want to mount this. So you say. Um, I guess uh, document dot get element 
by id and it's going to be root. So we are simply up trying to get this this element. So far it should be clear I think document dot get element by id will fetch this this div and then react dom dot render will inject this markup which is hello message with name equal to Alice and then we should say it's the hello Alice exclamation sign in there. Let's see if this works. It won't work just to tell you. So to serve it we can we can simply open the index.html uh, so let's do that. So it says React JS app loading, still loading, which of course means that it didn't work. It didn't work simply because we never imported anything. Oh wow! And then there is an unexpected token within uh, the code. Of course, it doesn't recognize that a script can have this, all this stuff inside that. So in order to handle it, we have to say, okay, this is not JavaScript. This is ES6. Which means you say type, um, I think, uh, is it uh, application babel or just babel? I'm not sure. So that's the part I will find out. So there is a very nice example. So I just search for React.js example with un pkg is in, in there and babel is in there. If I search for that, I'll find it right there. Babel standalone. Mm, nah. That doesn't seem to be. I shouldn't say babel. Let's get rid of babel and pkg. So there it is. React tutorial at master. So this, these are the. So I have to say text babel. Okay. So which means here I cannot say um, JavaScript, otherwise it thinks that it's JavaScript. I have to tell him that this is Babel. So now of course text Babel will make no sense to anybody until we have a Babel compiler. So let's get the Babel compiler imported and that is this. This is the Babel compiler. But then of course we need React itself. So this is React. This is React DOM and Babel. These three things at, at a minimum we need. So let's get those three things. Let me put that in the head. So there you see. You bring React into, into your page. You bring React DOM also into the page. And because we are coding in ES6, we need Babel. And Babel takes care of both ES6 as well as JSX, both of those. So that, that is good. So let's save this and reload. Whoa. What? Some kind of a heavy duty. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Expression. Ooh. Download React Dev Tools. What is all this? Um, let me see if I did something silly. Script type text babble. Let me see what this guy is saying. Link style sheet, React tutorials, and PKG jQuery, remarkable content, text babble. Everything looks right. What, what, what exactly are we doing wrong? Invalid regular what? Expression? Why is there even a question of any regular expression? We are not using anything, are we? Hmm. Well, part of it could be that, oh, here it says download React Dev Cool. Okay. And use HTTP server instead of a file URL. That Right there. That's the problem. So let's fix that problem. I opened it as a file. Okay, so let's not open it as a file. Instead, let's run a very basic server which we I can run with PHP minus s. Okay, um, local 
host AD80. So when I run that, it's running uh, the server. So I can just now go to localhost colon AD80 and that's a little bit better. So it says unexpected token render dev hello it doesn't like something about that inline variable script doesn't like that dev token somehow let's uh yeah i was surprised i think you have to put this in in parentheses i could be wrong about it but i do believe you that you have to mm, nah maybe not mm -hmm. oh right there the problem is i I missed this is obviously wrong completely wrong it's a method called render and I'm supposed to do this I would say return and that that's the issue let's see if this works okay get element by ID is not a function document so that's okay we are making progress so maybe it's ID in both capitals. Let's find out. Get element by ID. Let's see. Nope. Let me see what is the document dot get element by ID. I thought that was it. Oh, lowercase document. That's the problem. <laughs> Sorry, I was saying uppercase document, which is wrong. The object is document. The do root of the DOM tree is document in lowercase d. And there it is. Hello, Alice. Okay. Sorry. That was a little bit haphazard. So let's uh, take a look at the whole thing again. We have. Uh, we have. We import three JavaScript items. First is React framework. Second is React DOM framework. And you may say, hey, why is this different, separate? Well, React could be React for DOM or React for native also. So that's why this is the base framework of React. Then React DOM is just for web browsers as opposed to React native, which is for mobile. Then finally, we import Babel, which is to compile ES6 as well as JSX, which is this. Okay. And to indicate that my script is not JavaScript, but specifically ES6 to be compiled by Babel, we have to say type text Babel. So once you do that, this compiler, this Babel compiler will get activated and it will start compiling this into plain JavaScript. Okay, now that that's understood, this is our mount point. This is where the, the application will be mounted. It will be a child of this. And this React.js app loading will get it replaced by the React.js app. And the app is uh, one component in this class. And then after we have defined that class, we say, okay, React DOM, please find this element. You take this element, you know, which is this div. And then create this markup and inject that as a child of that element. So, and this markup is instantiate the hello message component, give it a property name of name equal to Alice. And that shows up. So far, so good. All right, now what we will do is do something a little more interesting than this. So let us uh, mm, create uh, so this name, Ali, this name uh, is coming from uh, as a hard-coded value, right? So it would be nice if we could um, add another component that takes the input. And you type the name in there. So the, let's see if we can do that. Next, let's create a second component called class. Uh, I don't know, should we call, create a component or just, uh, yeah, I guess we can create a component. Uh, or, wait, 
let's create a new component called app so that we can wrap uh, two things in, in, in it. So here's it, it, the app component extends same react dot component as before. And but this one it obviously had a, has a render method and when it renders we will pretty much put this in there okay this is going to be a wrapper component return this okay and then over here we simply specify app so this is very I mean instead of uh, rendering hello message we are rendering app and app itself is rendering hello message so that's not much of a change but it's uh, we are refactoring we are restructuring this let's see what happens well nothing happens it, from outside it looks exactly the same as before right obviously so because all we did was move the uh, the hello component from here to here hello message right? okay but there's a reason why Next, we want to add the input box. So, and here's the key. You cannot simply add an input right in front of this. That's not allowed, because you are now trying to return two elements instead of one. You are allowed to return only one element. You are never allowed to return two. So therefore, you have to wrap these two into a single parent, right? So as long as you wrap them into a div, you're fine. So let's uh, do that. Mm -hmm. so we'll create a tail with two children. Um, the input is going to be type text, and we can put a placeholder, which is a hint about what to type in. You say, enter your name right and then let's see what happens okay when we re refresh something broke a valid re react element must be you have you may have uh, what uh, return undefined array or, or invalid object what did we do wrong oh yeah, it doesn't like inputs like that. It, it, you, if you must close input tag, then you have to close them like, I think like that. Let's see if this works. No, app dot render. Uh, oh yeah, it does. I, I think it doesn't want you to break like that. So let's let's just so that we can break it properly. Let's uh, wrap this in. In parentheses like that so now we wrap it in parentheses and that allows us to put div on the next line okay let's see if this works okay it, it does work good so here's the input with enter your name as a hint placeholder okay so then I say Jitesh it doesn't do anything okay that's fine that's because we haven't we are not binding this to any anything right so in order to bind it, we have to add an on change handler. So let's see on change, and then we are going to attach a handler. Now this is again the curly brace syntax. You are allowed to put any JavaScript expression in there. So the expression that we will put will be, um, I suppose, uh, some method. So let's let's create a method uh, or a JavaScript function, right? And that will be let's say function uh, change or handle change. And then all handlers they rec automatically receive one argument called event, which is the ch in this case whatever event triggered them, which is on change event, right? So you can put handle change directly here. Okay, and then uh, so because this is just an expression which evaluates to a function handler, so then we can simply print console dot log event target, which will be this input box itself, 
dot value. So we are saying the value of that input box, whatever the value is hold, uh, held up in there. So let's see what happens. Reload. And now when I type anything in there, you see, each character is triggering the on change event. And that event is simply printing whatever is the value of the input box. As I start removing characters, it goes in the other direction. Right? So, do you see what's going on on the right? Okay. So, so far we are able to trigger handle uh, the change. Right? Now, we have to somehow supply that value in place of name, right? So what should we do? That's where the concept of state comes in. So what we have to do is we have to um, set state, sub apply the state. So I don't know if this will work or not, but let's find out if it works, which is uh, we will assign let's say this dot set state now the problem is this is a very fickle variable it changes randomly at, at very unexpected times so we can try but it, it won't work it probably won't work let's see this dot set state and the state will will has to be an object it cannot be a simple string so we will say the state name equal to whatever the event dot target dot value is so this way we are saying set state by the way is a react function it is inherited through component so because there, we are a component therefore we have a state so we are saying this dot set state set the state of this component uh, to this object where name equal to the whatever was uh, the user has typed into that input box input event dot target dot value let's see if that works so i don't think it will but let's see if it does reload and as soon as i start yeah as soon as i started ty typing set state of undefined so the reason is very simple this is not really this component this is something else whatever it is it is it's not this component okay so therefore because we cannot rely on that we have we come back to render and say var or you could use let or const or whatever let's say const which by the way is an es6 uh, construct statement const and you say constant and then you say self equal to this now remember we are outside this javascript function so therefore this still has a meaning it's a member of this render so now we we rename we gave it an alias of self now that it is got self here we could use self this here and let's see if we don't get an error now let me explain this again this changes its meaning when you are inside the javascript function but self doesn't self maintains its its meaning and therefore we simply say assign this to self and then start using self let's see if this works well, works means uh, as long as we don't get an error, it is working. Yeah, we are not getting an error, so it must be working. So what is happening? We are setting the state to a name equal to whatever has been typed, which means if we start u applying that here, instead of assigning name Alice, a hard-coded value, if we start saying, okay, well, give this self dot state you could say this dot also i think but at, let's say you self because we have aliased it self dot state dot name so now what we are saying is whatever state we are setting up, apply that state to this guy this will give us some problems and i'll tell you why but let's let's wait and see what happens this will probably fail but let's see reload and there's the error cannot read property name of null you see because initially pro property name this value is null that's the problem so if we don't want this to be null initially let's do this let us 
at first set a state uh, of name. So to set the state, we have to create a constructor. So let's create a constructor. It is called constructor. In ES6, constructor is literally called constructor. So constructor, as you might know, if you have done any object-oriented programming, initializes the object. So there, we can now say, call the super constructor. We have to call the super constructor. That is required. Without that, it won't let you go any further. Uh, the constructor can take props, the properties, as the uh, arguments, and now you, you are basically supplying the properties to the super constructor. And then you call this dot set state. And this time we, you create the name. Remember, name is the property. And give it a value of empty string. Or we could say stranger, which means we don't know the name yet. Let's see if this works. OK. Reload. Still, there is a problem. Name of null. Wait a second. I inline Babel script 15 which is this <coughs> self but state dot name mm. no, sure okay why is that happening should I not use self I think I should be able to okay let me use this instead if that makes any difference might might or might not Uh, fail again. It says cannot read property name of null. Oh, state is the problem. It doesn't understand that there is such a thing as state. So I think we have to say get state. I believe. Should we try get state? See if that works. Might or might not. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, warning. Set state can only update a mounted or mounting component. This is usually means that you call set state in an okay, okay, okay. Because it is unmounted, you don't call set state. You simply say this dot state. So, so don't call set state. Simply say this dot state equal to name stranger. Okay, so what we are doing now is we are not calling it set state because set state is going to going to now listen carefully set state is going to trigger a chain reaction a sequence of events which is going to repaint the page you don't want to do that during this constructor you're 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 just initializing the object so therefore don't call set state simply assign a new value to state let's see if that helps Okay, this dot get state is not a function. So that means I think we we have to simply call state by its name directly. And let me use self dot if that works. All right, finally, finally it worked. Hello stranger, look, because we are saying self dot state dot name and self dot state has been initialized name equal to stranger. Now, as we start typing something in here, J, I, T, E, S, H, it's, it is working. So our handle change is getting invoked on every keystroke. And on every keystroke, handle change is calling set state. And because it is calling set state, that's why the entire comp uh, React co app component is getting re-rendered. Re, repainted and that's why as we start typing anything into this it's it's updating itself so this hopefully gives you an interesting um, introduction I guess this kind of opens up the possibilities a lot of things can happen now uh, now that you got real-time updates, as you're typing in something in here, this thing is updating in real time. You you begin to see the possibilities. Now, 
I have done a corresponding example in AngularJS. It seems much simpler, AngularJS. But the problem in AngularJS is there is too much um, black magic. It's it's there is too much magic and trickery going on. In this, also there is some trickery going on when you call set state. You don't know what's happening under the covers. Why is, why are the components getting updated? But other than that, everything seems quite understandable. So this is more verbose. There is more uh, code in here, but I still think that this is slightly more understandable. Okay. Okay. So we want to see if we can replace all this this and self business with lambda function. So let's see if that is possible. Um, so on change, instead of assigning an expression that is that is equivalent to this uh, uh, handle change function, we let's try to have a a lambda function here. So we will have something called event as the parameter, and then uh, we will and the the value of that lambda function is going to be simply this dot set state event dot target dot value and that should uh, let's see if by the way in in es6 these end the semicolon at the end of the of the statement are optional as long as the meaning is clear i think it's okay to omit them so the so the expression the lambda expression is, uh, function is going from here up to here, so that's the lambda expression, and the curly braces outside of those two, that are basically the JavaScript evaluation hint. So, okay, if that works, uh, that's kind of good. And in any case, in this, we don't even have to call this self. We can call this this, because it, it there is no confusion about who this is. This is the owner of render. That's fine. Let's see if this works. So uh, we get rid of the entire thing here. This will reduce our code. Let's see if this works. Save and reload. No errors. That's good, right? Oh, okay, now we have errors. As we started typing, it says set states takes a, a, an object of state variables. Right? Takes an object. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, we 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 did made some small mistake. It's a small mistake that we cannot give it value. We have to give it an object, which means it's, we have to say name equal to value. So name colon like this. So this is what we were doing earlier. So let's try that if that works. Yeah, that worked. Good. Nice. So lambda function kind of reduced the amount of code, although it did m make the whole this line very long. So it would have been nice if we could somehow make this thing a little bit smaller. Let's see on change if I can wrap this a little, like break break it down a bit, it would make things simpler. Is that readable? Yeah, maybe. Let me make break it a little bit more. Yeah, maybe. Uh, this is beginning to look okay. I mean, of course, if you don't like this uh, cluttering up the entire lambda function, you can you can always move it out of here and in here. You could. Sorry. How do you format this thing? Is there a way to format? Okay. Ooh. Oh gosh, no, no, no. So you could always give this a name. You could say, you know, let's create a constant function expression, const handle change equal to that. And now, oops. So indentation in my mind is very very important. Without that, it's hard to understand your own code. Okay. 
So we are just creating handle change here. And now back in here, we could just call handle change. That is almost the same, except because it's a lambda function, we can still refer to this. I think it might work. Will it work? Let's see. Uh, let's reload. No errors. Yeah, it worked. Okay, so what we have learned is that if this was a plain JavaScript function, this doesn't really mean what you think it means. But in case of a lambda function, this does mean what it should mean typically, which is the the currently prevailing this is the component that you're in, that you're a method of, the class that you're a method of. So that's what this refers to. So I think uh, it's kind of helpful, yeah, not to have uh, to refer to self and whatnot. Okay. All right, so now uh, we, we are beginning to learn about state management. So that's the other thing about um, about React. It, although you can use more advanced patterns like Flux and Redux and others, we won't go into them at least today. But they seem, if you want to keep, uh, if you manage, a, if you want to manage a, st a state and keep it very simple, they still recommend that shared state, anything that any state that is shared between two components. Uh, in our case, uh, this this input component and this hello message are sharing a state. Therefore, the state that is shared should always be kept in a parent, a common parent of the two, which in this case is the app. That's why we are keeping the name state inside the app component, because it's a, it's a parent of both input as well as hello message. Right? That way they can share it. One more thing we should talk about is the fact that hello message has no methods other than render. So when you have a component that has no method, met, methods other than render, you can turn it into something called functional component. So what is a functional component? Functional component is instead of being a class that extends react.component, it is simply a function. Better yet, it's a lambda function. It's usually better to, call, uh, to think of it as lambda, lambda function, but let's start simpler. Let's uh, turn this into a function, which means uh, you say uh, our component's called hello message, so we can just turn it into a simple variable, const, not even a variable, constant, that is a function, takes no parameters, well, it should take one parameter, which is props as in properties and now you don't have to say this dot props you just say props uh, and these properties will be injected in it when we instantiate the component so props and now the function itself is render it doesn't need to call have, declare render separately so that's the function and that's it I think this will work. Let's find out if it does. So now what did we do? We simply converted the, the, the function, the class into a function. We took the render and turned that into a function with the uh, parameters props and then use the props. Let's see if this works. No errors, that's good. Yeah, it does work. Okay, now that it works, let's go back to this. Uh, this is certainly much simpler than what we had earlier. What we had earlier was this class hello message, which has a render method and it uses this dot props dot name. And once we changed, what did we change? We simply turned hello message into a function. Okay. So at this point, this uh, this is a job. Uh, the, uh, the function takes an uh, a parameter called props, which is a set or an object that contains name and this. So now there is a, a simpler way. You could convert, uh, simplify this further by turning this into a lambda function. So, which means you remove the word function and put fat arrow. This is called fat arrow. 
and that's it that turns it into a lambda function save and reload and yeah still works good next we can sim simplify this even further whenever something takes an object you can destructure that object by replacing the parameter remember props is an object right it has one property called name you can restructure it by saying okay please whatever object i'm about to get it will have a property called name assign it to this my parameter name this one so when you put curly braces around this is again an es6 feature you put curly braces around that property now you no longer have to say props because you took the props object and you destructured it into its individual com uh, properties in this case there's only one property called name so you can use it uh, with curly brace property name curly brace and now you can use the uh, that property name as a local variable let's see if this works yeah it still works as you can see we are we are get, this is getting simpler and simpler like cleaner and shorter i like that Right. So mm, that's that is uh, now ob obviously this basic amount of knowledge can allow you to create a very compl complex uh, things. So let's uh, uh, let's create something more complicated. We will go out on the internet and find the uh, the Google. Geolocation API. Uh, so here's the Google Geolocation API developers. Let's see. One second. All right. So this this is I I searched for Google Geolocation API and we found this, and so it's pretty good. I mean I think uh, I like this. Uh, you do need the key only if you're making lots and lots of calls. But if you are doing some something simple, you don't need. So let me show you how this API works. I copy this and let me. Okay, so we copy, we, we took this uh, URL and we, we copy and paste it here into geolocate, right? And then you can give it some parameters such as um, carrier constructor oh, wait that no 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 I don't didn't I shouldn't I was not I shouldn't be looking for geolocation but geocoding API sorry about that geocoding API is what I was looking for not geolocation so let's see if this can work for us Google API is JSON oh, okay yeah that's much better this is what I was looking for let me just uh, copy paste this uh, and I am I don't I'm not going to use my API key I'm just going to use use it without the API key so here so read this it says maps.googleapis.com maps api geocode json I want my response in json address equal to some whatever address you, you give and in, when you type that into a browser or make an HTTP request you get a very rich response. It gives you location lat long. But the one thing that I really like is this formatted address. So it's Google Building 41. So it gives a, a standardized address. Uh, you give it a partial address. So let me replace that with, let's say, the zip code of Jacksonville 32256. That's it. I did that. And I simply gave a zip code and it gives a formatted address of Jacksonville FL 32256. So why am I doing all this? Because I want to make an Ajax call. So let's make an Ajax call to this. We copy this and we will, uh, we can use either jQuery or we can use Axios. Um, I'm going to use Axios just because I just learned it also because it, it handles JSON better than jQuery does so let's try to use Axios instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, jQuery for Ajax call so let's go out and 
sorry, where is my, yeah, let's see, axios, there it is, uh, promise based, uh, axios is a library that make, lets us make some ajax calls, uh, I'm, I'm going to get axios simply from the cdn, so I'm just copying this cdn address, and I put axios in there, that's it, this will let me use axios so in t so what i want to do is in, uh, instead of the name i will say enter a partial address okay so the input component let's say enter a partial address right and then here is um, this was hello message let's create another component called uh, let's call it geocode Geo code, right? And then we will it takes an address, partial address, I suppose, right? And then makes an Ajax call and then renders. Hmm. So let's see how how will it make an Ajax call? Huh? This is gonna be interesting. Um well yeah, we, we cannot, or and more importantly, should not uh, do the Ajax call in this component. This component should be purely for display only, so a functional component. So we will simply say formatted address. We'll just say for formatted address equal to, you know, address, whatever address it received. That's all we are going to do. In this respect, it's not at all different from hello message. But so, and let's rename this not geocode but to formatted address. That's the name of the component. So it's not very different from hello message. So we will put the formatted address in there, and then the address value will be uh, this dot state dot address. Now we are leaving the responsibility to find a formatted address. Uh, so sorry, we don't want to give it the value of state uh, th this address, but formatted address. So the job of calculating, computing, and finding the value of formatted address is upon the application component, this component, which I think is the one we want to make more complicated than the rest of it. So that's okay. This is good. So now the only problem is you're going to type your partial address in here and handle change is going to keep updating that uh, uh, so we now we say okay now the address is whatever the event dot target dot value was right now based on that we want to once that it has been modified we want to um, we want to compute the geo coded address the standardized address. So to do that, we make an axios call. Axios get, and here is the URL, and the URL is going to be whatever we had in here. That's the URL. So we make an Ajax call to this URL, and then it takes parameters. The parameters are going to be params address is going to be event dot target dot um, value so that is the input box value okay it's just making an ajax call on every keystroke probably not the best idea but we'll we'll get to it in a second we'll try to fix it later so that's your that those are your that's your configuration where parameters equal. Basically it will it will append that parameter to this get request. Now when it succeeds, we want to do something. And that something is dot then, which means what to do when it succeeds. And that will be a uh, function. So we could use uh, this gets a response object. 
and the response object is the parameter uh, of the, the this uh, lambda function. Okay, so here's the lambda function, and for a moment let's just print it. We don't want to deal with anything, but just console dot log it. So this is the age axis response that will come asynchronously. On every keystroke, it will make the axios dot get uh, age axis request, and that's what handle change is doing. So it's a little bit wasteful, but we will will do this do a better job soon. So let's call this. Let's assign this a value uh, to um, const. Uh, let's say rec request req rec. Okay. Then we can say rec dot then. This is the This is the um, then as in success. On success, call this. Uh, uh, this is basically a promise. So promise when it resolves, it calls the then callback, which is this guy. All right. So let's stick with this. See what happens. Mm. Reload. No errors. That's good. Three two two five six. Do, do you see how? It made uh, it kept printing. And the last one I hope looks good. If you go into this, is the response in which you can go into data, which has an array of results, and that has one object called object, and it has this uh, <laughs> interesting. It has uh, <laughs> it is three two two five, and then oh six never made it. It seems. If I say how about six, I want you to pay attention to six. Let's check again. It simply took three to do five, didn't take the last part, six. Oh, there it is now. Now it's saying checks and will three to do five, six. So, okay, it's it's making those calls, All right, those requests, that's good. Okay, so, now we need to use it. So let's not console log it. Let us simply do set state. So now we can say they start set state formatted address is equal to now look it's a it's a complicated chain. From the response you go into data, from data you go into results, take the zeroth element and find formatted address in there. So that means first you should check if response has a data element and response dot data dot results is it results plural? Yeah results dot length which is an array, of course, so it will be length is greater than zero. If all of these things are valid, then only bother to set the state. And what we are going to set it to is response dot data dot results zeroth element dot formatted address. Let's see if this works. And if it successfully sets the state with formatted address, then it will automatically update this. By the way, this is unnecessary because we are not using address out of state, so we can get rid of it. Let's comment it out. Be why are we, I mean, the fact that we are not using address is uh, should be apparent from the fact that we are using event, we are making a request from event dot target dot value, not from address. So the state doesn't need to maintain address. It only needs to maintain formatted address because formatted address, unless you do this set state, this component will not update. Right. So save it. Let's see what happens. Three, two, two, CC, five, six. It was updating itself in real time, every time making a 
um, an Ajax call. Let's you can start typing Jack Sunwell. J is Jena, Germany. Jack is Jack County, Texas. Jackson is Jackson, Mississippi. Jacksonville is Jacksonville, Florida, USA. Similarly, if you say London, then New Mexico. London. L O N D is London, UK, it seems right already. L O N D N D O is Londo, Cameroon. London is London. So, you know, Del is Delaware. Del he is Delhi, India. So it's making Ajax request. Oh, by the way, then it finally broke when, when I backspaced fully out of it. So I should probably, to protect, because there is nothing in here and it's still making Ajax request, right? So to protect from um, that from happening, we should uh, simply say, don't make, make an Axios request unless there's something in there. So we could just say const address equals event dot target dot value and then if address which means address is non null or non empty then only do any of these things this way you are protecting yourself and then of course you we should now that we have defined address we don't need to use that whole thing event dot target dot value we can just say address Remember, the left-hand side address is just a key, while right-hand side address is the local variable, or local constant in this case. Okay, and so let's see if this helps. Uh, this way, when we say London, and then when you backspace through it, it keeps Limburg, Netherlands, which is or it gets on AL. <laughs> so, or we could, if we didn't want anything in that situation, we could say if no address, then else, in else we could say set state to for, a formatted address to nothing. This will clear out. It won't keep that Limburg on for empty if I reload with an L of course we get Limburg but with London we get London when we backspace out of it last with the L it's Limburg but when we completely get out of it it gets blacked out again J A Jack Sun will I misspelled it. Even when I misspell it, look, Jackson VL, and it's still approx. Whatever it finds matching, the first one it's showing. So the closest to that is Jacksonville FLUS. If I start typing 8493 uh, Bay Parkway, Brooklyn Meadows. There it is, 8493 Bay Meadows Bay Jackson. <laughs> So with, with a little bit of the address, it completes it. This is pretty good, isn't it? All right. Uh, so what have we done so far? <coughs> We've created a fully functional, functioning Ajax application, which takes a partial address and uses Google's geocoding API to fetch a, a complete address from that. It will correct any incorrect address. So if if uh, if I copy and paste the standard address, right, and then make all kinds of mistakes in there, if I say Bay Med, it still gets the right. If I remove USA, of course, no big deal. Right. If I turn, turn this, remove the number also, then it says, yeah, it's Bay Med as well. Wow, well, what do you want? And if I say one bay meters way, it says, yeah, I said there's a one bay meters way. One, two, three. Well, there's no one, two, three, but there is a 12 bay meters way. Do you want that one? And that is bay meters circle east, by the way. So it's it's basically helping me out approximate the address. Um, 
So finally, if I say 84, 9. So now there is no 849. And then 8492, for example, it says, yeah, there is an 8492, it seems. And 8493 is, of course, up there. So, so we have created uh, the, uh, let's look at the structure of the application one more time. To recap, React applications, they have a mount point, which is a div, usually, or a span, or some kind of a DOM element. Uh, you have to include React.js, you have to include React.dom.js, that makes it function in a browser. Then since we are, I mean, in real world, when you are creating production applications, you are not going to use the Babel compiler uh, in a browser. You are going to use, use Node.js based Babel compiler. So, but for now we are learning, we are just starting out, we want to do quick development, we don't want too many tools, so that for, that's why we can just use these three things. Finally, we added Axios for Ajax. All right, here's our mount point. What do you do? You create a script of type text babble, and then you put your entire code in there. Now I'm going to move this code out of here into its own file. So I can just say new file, call it app.js, and paste this in here. So this makes it much easier, uh, much cleaner. Save it, and to use it, I have to say script type text babble, and then src is equal to app.js. Now it is not e exactly JavaScript, it is ES6, which is kind of different from JavaScript in a sense, but we can call it .js, it's okay, as long as we have text slash babel as the type. So when you do that, let's see it continues to work, I hope. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, so, so we just offloaded the, the this index.html was full of all that code. We, we offloaded that code into app.js. And in app.js, we usually have an application component and then a bunch of other components. In this case, the other two components are functional components. Uh, it's common to have uh, one large application component that manages most of the state, and then a bunch of functional components. Their job is simply to render something, okay? And in real world, large applications, you will distribute these components across multiple files. They won't all be in one file like this. And then finally, uh, to, to render your application, you simply make your app node a child of an existing node, in this case the mount point called root, uh, div id root, and then you just say, okay, take that div id root and inject the app tag into that. And once you do that, it, it triggers a chain, a chain of events where it instantiates this guy which calls the constructor, constructor sets the state, of the name, I, anyway, so it looks like we don't need name uh, because we are not using that other component. So you can just uh, get rid of this constructor. If you got rid of the constructor, what is left? Everything is a, is a, <laughs> is a functional component. Uh, wait, no, 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 there is something very important. We do need state, yes. So th this constructor is important because it initializes state, state to something and you cannot initialize the state in here. That's simply not okay. That long, so this constructor is very much needed. Uh, so I was wondering a second back, could we just turn this into a functional component? And the answer is no. We cannot turn this into a functional component. Anything that has state cannot be a functional component. It has to be a regular component, okay? So there's no concept of state for these guys. These functional components, they don't have state. Therefore, you can never say this dot state anything uh, because they, they they get all of their information from their properties. Okay, they can have in nested functions in here. They can have you know some some uh, lambda functions here. That is okay, right? But they cannot have state. That's the one thing they cannot have. All right, so. 
So, so this this dot state is kind of important. And as we learned, this is not this really when we are using JavaScript closures or JavaScript nested functions. In those cases, the meaning of this keeps changing from time to time. That's why we, we switched from JavaScript closures to these lambda functions, which is an ES6 thing. So here is the lambda function. In in in, in these ES6 lambda functions, this the keyword this it really means the owner of this I mean the instance of the, this class owner of the method okay. so that's why we switch to lambda functions and um, that's that's it I think for now we should stop and then we can pick it up we will combine this with some restful services including Drupal restful services